Do you remember when Samsung were the absolute bee's knees of performance drives in M.2 NVMe? When NVMe's first arrived on the scene as high performance alternatives to traditional SATA SSDs, it has to be said that Samsung were pretty much ahead of everyone in the third and the fourth generation with their 960, 970, 980 and then 990 series of drives providing performance numbers that just weren't available elsewhere for upwards of a year from other brands. Now in the fifth generation of M.2 NVMEs, Samsung and the other leading first party brand WD have been to be charitable rather cautious about the drives they've rolled out with alternative parties from Seagate all the way through to Toshiba and more rocking out Gen 5 drives very early doors at 5x4. Brands like Samsung here were rolling out Gen 5x2 drives only a handful of months ago, more than a year to year and a half more than everyone else. And a lot of users that saw those Gen 5x2 reduced performance and reduced bandwidth drives and when when is Samsung going to jump on the bandwagon and roll out a high performance little drive? And here it is, the Samsung 9100 Pro. This is their first consumer and I would say professional Gen 5 times 4 SSD with performance numbers uh, reported between all of the capacities between 13 and 14.7 gigabytes per second. There's a lot to like here and with Samsung being one of those brands again like WD where everything is done in-house from the controller to the NAND to the DRAM and the construction it has to be said that this drive has got a lot to deliver on and given their lukewarm reception that the 990 EVO and 990 EVO Plus arrive with there's a lot banking on this drive to bring Samsung back into the fold. Now, as much as I'd like to bore you with the specifications, we already did a news video on this very drive when we first heard about it a few weeks ago. It's arriving in a 1, two, uh, one TB, 2 TB, 4 TB, and soon an 8 TB configuration at $199, $299, four, uh, $549, and still waiting for the price on that 8 TB for each of those configurations respectively there. Interestingly, the NAND on this is pretty enterprise. It's 3-bit MLC VLAND. Again, we were assuming it was going to be kind of a reuse of what we saw in the EVO and EVO Plus. And alongside that, we can talk about the controller a little bit. Taking advantage of the Presto Gen 5 controller on here, this really is breaking a lot of ground over what we've seen previously from Samsung on their other drives. Again, it would have been very easy to assume, and many of us did, that this drive would basically have been the EVO Plus that came before it at five times two with a few lanes opened up, but it, no, it seems like they really have doubled down on the development on this drive and came out with something particularly special here. But what about the larger capacities, the 4TB, the 8TB, I hate seagulls, um, that have more NAND on either side of that PCB? They are reporting performance numbers of 14.8 over 13.4 gigabytes per second read write respectively. Now alongside that performance there's also one, two, four and eight gig of LPDDR4 DRAM. This isn't DRAMless like the 990 EVO or 990 EVO Plus. This is a proper traditional SSD rocking out. What do we get for our money here? Well we get the M2 NVMe and in the case of this 2TB model we have two individual NAND uh, modules there on the top and on the back we have nothing. We've got a heat shield there to assist in dissipation through the PCB, but that's really it. So it's pulling a lot of eggs in the old basket there on board that drive. Uh, the TBW uh, terabytes written is reported at 600, 1200, 2400, and 4800 respectively across all of the capacities, and that reports in a drive writes per day at about 0.0. 329 so a third of a drive a day which is fairly respectful across the five years of warranty this arrives with equally active power use on this has been reported at 7.6 8.1 and 9 watts across the 1 2 and 4 tb respectively another thing that's worth keeping in mind is you do have turbo right we have effectively pseudo write cache built in here and at each capacity of the 1, 2 and 4 TB you have 114 gig, 226 gig and 442 gig respective of that onboard turbo right there. If you can use the Samsung Magician on some of the drives in the Samsung family to actually extend that because so keep in mind so for example the 1 TB if you've got 114 gig there of uh, that pseudo write cache which by the way is coming out of your base level capacity when you are writing to the drive if you're writing drive files larger than that you're really going to see a sudden drop in that performance number there and drops in performance 
are really the name of the game here because Gen 5 SSDs, for all of the performance they bring, it has to be said that they have a tendency to drop off performance very early doors. And that's something that we're going to be looking out for in our performance testing in just a moment. Now, the drive arrives either in a bare model like this, but there is also a proprietary heatsink version that you can get from Samsung. No doubt the RRP that we reported earlier on will, you know, become a little bit more favorable over time. Samsung, when it comes to seasonal events, have always been a little bit more aggressive about the pricing. And for those that are looking at an affordable drive for containerization, virtual machines, or larger databases, I will say that the IOPS on this are absolutely phenomenal. At 1.85 million over 2.6 million on the lowest capacity, going up to 2.2 and 2.6 on the highest capacity drive there in terms of 4K random IOPS. So again, for Samsung's first true Gen 5 times 4 consumer grade SSD, a lot of the reported numbers seem absolutely fantastic. But what about in testing? Okay, so for today's test, we are taking advantage of a Windows 10 system here. This is running a 12th generation i5 with 16 gig of DDR5 memory, and the OS is running from a Gen 4 drive. Uh, we've run the Gen 5 drive, the Samsung 9100, inside the spare slot. But as you can see there from Crystal Disk, it is running on a Gen 5 times 4 lane there. Um, so let's go through our test. First, I started with Atto. And in the Atto tests, I ran a 256 megabyte, one gigabyte, four gigabyte, and 16 gigabyte individual test there across. And there was only one point during the four gigabyte testing where I any, saw any kind of oversaturation. We will get on to the temperature increases later on, but I will say throughout the course of all of the performance numbers there, we saw a fairly consistent trend of between 11.3 and 11.5 gigabytes per second over 12.55 uh, gigabytes per second, a little bit higher in some cases. And keep in mind that's gigabytes per second, not gigabit. So more likely I'm after the calculation that would have gone a little higher on the gigabit calculation, because obviously the number of uh, bits, megabytes, etc., in gigabytes, but nonetheless, Atto was a very consistent performance number there. Keep in mind that was reported at 14.7 uh, over 13.4. Uh, for the 2TB from the official numbers, and that again is using a high-powered Ryzen with a crap load of memory. So again, really, really happy with what we're seeing here on our domestic comparable PC. Next up, Crystal Disk, and with Crystal Disk, we definitely saw some, again, follow-up great numbers there. Uh, the highest being when we did our 16 gigabyte test there, so again, we did one, four, and 16, and on the 16 gig test there, we saw the highest numbers. Uh, overall, we saw uh, 11,881 over 12,444 read-write megabytes per second, and of course, we got the mixed read-write there over 7030 as well. Um, the IOPS numbers, uh, we got around 1.4 million, I think 1.5 million some early testing that we got the highest it could go but again as mentioned uh, earlier in the video that is when you're really going to look at high-end uh, PCs to eat the most out of that and unfortunately because of uh, the Gen 4 OS drive that is why we saw those right IOPS there noticeably lower as capping out but nonetheless it's still very very solid numbers for Crystal Disk across the three different capacities even if the right numbers did seem a little bit smaller there on the smaller test file size. Next up, AJA. Again, three different file sizes at 1, 4, and 16. And again, very confident number. Keep in mind, uh, these were 1080i files. And unlike Atto and unlike Crystal Disk Mark, this is one where we are looking more at media file sizes. So you tend to find comparative numbers against some of the other synthetic testing around 15 to 20% lower, at least in megabytes per second against the numbers you see. If you watch the other reviews, you'll know what I mean. But nonetheless, it was great not only to see us getting close to 10,000 uh, megabytes per second on read, but actually to see it periodically exceed that. I've never seen a four digit number on AJA, and none of the Gen 5 drives I've ever tested have produced that. So again, massive kudos. Lastly, nice and simple, it was a Windows transfer. We transferred 52 gigabytes of mixed data, 1,711 files across 42 folders over onto the drive. Now again, we've got our initial internal drive there with its own caps and limitations, but we saw this performance take place remarkably quickly at just over 34 seconds. Again, 
We are still talking about a relatively synthetic comparative test, but nonetheless, those are still phenomenal numbers there for carrying over from a Gen 4 onto a Gen 5 drive. And again, if we were running a dual Gen 5 system, unfortunately I only have the 1M2 slot for Gen 5, it would have been good to see high numbers, but at least based on what I saw there, this is still confident, consistent numbers. And all of this comes down to that temperature. I was using a domestic heat sink off the top of this. I wasn't using the proprietary one, unfortunately. The drive I had here doesn't have it. And we saw a maximum temperature there during the most sustained performance at a little above 81 degrees. Now you can see the drops in heat there was actually pretty darn good. How quickly the drive came back down to a manageable temperature, but it always kind of lived uh, between 45 and 55 during those idle moments. The way it dissipated heat is perhaps not as good as it could have been. But again, this is not the proprietary heat sink. I was using a third party one. Nevertheless, Gen 5 drives are always gonna get hot. It's just a question of one, how quickly the heat gets dissipated, and two, just how poorly that heat impacts the performance before the eventual actual throttling above 70 degrees. But I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing in the numbers are quite high, but then for this performance, you've got to leverage it against one another. Arriving as easily one of the highest performing Gen 5 times 4 SSDs in the market right now, it would have been very easy to call out Samsung on their performance numbers of what they said, given they're based on high-end Ryzen-based architecture. But I will say, even my comparatively domestic class test machine that we're utilizing this on to get some real-world numbers was still very good. We've regularly cracked the 10, 11, and got even close to the 12 gigabytes per second read performance numbers. Obviously, IOPS are going to be heavily dependent on your own CPU and system architecture, but I will say that I can comfortably see this drive hitting all of the numbers that Samsung promoted in all of their early materials. Also, I'm not gonna say this drive isn't gonna generate high temps, it will. It's a Gen 5 times four drive and in sustained synthetic use, it is gonna achieve those high heats. But compared to some of the Gen 5 drives that we have looked at at Gen 5 times four, that controller is doing a fantastic job of leveraging a lot of the performance and it can on a lower power consumption. And that was visible in those temp numbers that we saw during our testing. And despite the fact that power consumption is around two to three watts higher than the 990 Pro, I will say the performance numbers on this are reported at twice that. And even when we compared our performance numbers for this against when we tested our 990 Pro, for the additional 2.5 to 2.6 watts power consumption difference, I was really impressed with what this drive was giving me. And yes, sustained performance a great deal of time did see that inevitable drop that Gen 5 times 4 drives do. But if you're looking at, you know, LLM, you're looking at large scale databases where it's small files, heavy volume, this drive really is cutting a lot of those edges off the difficulty. Right now, this drive's only real downfall is the fact that it's arriving more than a third of the way through 2025, giving a number of its competitors almost two years head start on their Gen 5 times 4 drives. And in that world, this drive arriving two years later, after a lot of people have already purchased their drives, it does put the higher performance numbers into perspective. Yes, you're looking at 14.7 gigabytes per second, which is we're almost at full saturation of Gen 5 times 4. But still, nonetheless, this is still only 1 to 2 gigabytes per second higher than other drives in the market that you can pick up for more than 30 to 40 percent cheaper due to their being in the market longer. Bottom line, is this a good drive? Yes, it definitely, definitely is. If you're looking at a Gen 5 drive right now and you can stretch the extra little bit of bunts, I would definitely recommend it. You can definitely see and feel the performance difference given to Samsung waiting that little bit longer in the old R&D department to get this out the door. I wish it had come out a year sooner than it has, but I am glad it's here. And from here, it's gonna be interesting to see one, what happens after this? Does Samsung start rolling out other variations of this product to portfolio? And more importantly, even though this is a proprietary drive through and through, what are we going to see from other Gen 5 times 4 drives in the market to compete with Neil, ultimately the gold standard of performance? Let's find out and watch it together. Thank you so much for watching. There should be a written review link below as well over on NAS Compares. If you found this video helpful and if you're going to get a hold of this drive anyway, make sure those two things are true. Please take advantage of the links in the description that will take you to a few different stores because using those will allow us, and as compares, it's just me and Eddie, just us doing all of this. And it really helps us do, to keep doing what we do when we get those small commissions off those links. But that's up to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.